major health concern in Canada. A record number of invasive strep A infections have been recorded in the country, particularly in children under the age of 15. The Public Health Agency of Canada says more than 4,600 cases were logged last year. That's the highest ever. The previous peak was in 2019, and that was barely more than 3,000 cases. Strep A infections are usually mild and cause strep throat, which can be treated with antibiotics. More severe and invasive infections are less common, but can be deadly. Public Health says six children in Ontario have died since October. Here to talk about this, uh, this health, health news is Dr. Dale Kalina, an infectious diseases specialist and chief medical information officer at Brant Community Healthcare System. Doctor, thank you for joining us today. Good to see you, Roger. Well, this is a record-breaking number of infections. Uh, how concerning is that? So group A streptococcal infections uh, certainly wax and wane. Uh, we see group A streptococcal infections all times of year, and it, it changes. Um, and I think what we're seeing right now, which is causing a little bit of concern, are, of course, a few very notable and very tragic cases recently, uh, but also the fact that when we use some of our comparators looking back over the course of the past few years, all of our numbers are a little bit off because of the pandemic. So with a contagious disease such as this, uh, we're bound to see changes and fluctuations in numbers. And is, um, we've had RSV, we've had uh, uh, the pandemic, COVID, and the flu going around. Is that being, are those factors in why we're seeing more strep A? Are people uh, more vulnerable to it? Well, I think in the sense that, uh, particularly if you're looking back at numbers of group A streptococcal infections through 2020, 2021, for example, people were staying far away from each other. And that uh, sort of uh, preventative measure uh, of wearing personal protective equipment and staying away from others and not having large gatherings that we were doing in 2020, 2021, for example, that's really going to reduce the numbers of any communicable disease, including group A streptococcal infections, which I think is what we're seeing here. And it is concerning six children in Ontario alone have died. Uh, what should parents be looking for? When, when do they say, well, it's time to go to the hospital? Yeah, so as you mentioned, group A streptococcal infections, very, very common, and they usually cause anything from strep throat to cellulitis, which is kind of a, uh, an infection of the skin. Um, but it's where you have not only some of those localized symptoms, whether it be pain in your throat or pain and warmth in your skin, usually in a leg, you're also looking for a rapid spread and worsening of those symptoms, but also systemic symptoms, so fevers, chills, fatigue, and particularly for younger children, um, they're not wetting their diapers. They're not having adequate oral intake. These are all things, uh, not only uh, all of the symptoms to get medical attention, but particularly those systemic symptoms for any age range. It's important to go into an urgent care or an emergency center uh, to be able to get checked out to make sure that those warning symptoms aren't warning signs of something much more nefarious, like an invasive group A streptococcal infection. Always better to be safe than sorry. Now, I know some people, we've had some concerns that hospitals are uh, at their limits. Uh, how is your hospital doing right now? Or how are the hospitals around you doing? Hospitals are busy. They, they are. Ours is included in that. But it's a really important reminder that emergency departments are there for you. They're for these specific reasons. Uh, group A streptococcal infections are not... Uh, they're, they're complicated infections, and there are certainly reasons to go into the emergency department it doesn't matter how busy your local emergency department is. If you're concerned, if you're feeling unsafe, if you have any of these red flag symptoms, come into the hospital, reach out for medical attention. That is why we're here. The hospital system, it, there's no question about it. It's really struggling right now. We need a lot more support for what we need to be able to offer for our communities. But that doesn't mean that you, can, you should avoid the hospital systems at all. Okay, before we go, I just want to ask your thoughts on uh, King Charles making a very public point about his benign prostate treatment. Uh, how important is that when it comes to men's health? You're right. I think with a public figure such as King Charles, uh, it's a, an important reminder that uh, those who have prostates over a certain age, uh, they do tend to enlarge. We get benign prostatic hypertrophy, which is what that is. But it can also be something more worrisome. I'm not saying that it is in this case, uh, but making sure that you check yourself and have your healthcare provider check you for your prostate, that's important. For regular health checkups, it's just, it's a strong vote for having a family physician and a family practice team. And I think it's a really great moment 
uh, for somebody who's in the public eye, such as the king, to be able to make that known and to remind people of the importance of their own health. Especially important coming out of the pandemic. I know I hadn't had a checkup in a while, and it was the first one probably in four years, and a lot of people are probably in that same boat. Yeah, and if you're in that sort of a situation, it's it, sometimes it can feel uncomfortable to broach that topic with your family physician. Uh, but first of all, you're not the only one. Every, everything kind of fell off the, the radar a little bit, I think, for a lot of individuals in terms of preventative medicine. So that's everything from prostate checkups to pap smears to uh, vaccines. There's no embarrassment. Come to your family physician, go to your nurse practitioner, whoever it may be, and get back on track. Um, there's no time like the present. All right, Dr. Kalina, thank you very much.